My name is Michael Bendit. Um, I have a networking group that launched about a year ago called the Trusted Referral Network. Um, it is specifically for uh, independent marketing, sales, and advertising professionals who provide services in those categories. Um, it's a national network. We have about 145 members now, some of you who have joined us here today, so thank you for that. Uh, we are looking to build a network um, to roughly four or 500 people. Uh, we're looking for people who will get engaged, uh, show up at meetings. We have weekly meetings um, online, and we will eventually, and not too far in the distant future, be forming local chapters as well as industry-specific chapters that will be category-specific. Um, uh, so or category exclusive. So if you are a member of a particular chapter, you might be the only you know, LinkedIn coach or um, advertising um, uh, analyst or whatever it happens to be that your, you or your agency does. So uh, would love to link in with people, connect with them. And if they want to check out um, the Trusted Referral Network, uh, I will put in the chat, um, you can check out trustref.net. Um, so David, why don't you unmute and uh, introduce yourself and Serial Marketers? Uh, yeah, sure thing. Well, I'm a proud Trusted Referral Network member. And uh, so, so Michael, thanks for giving me the opportunity to collaborate with you on another event. And, and uh, also, uh, uh, as I was mentioning to Madeline, I'm an uh, introvert and an extrovert's profession. So so look forward to learning with uh, all of you today. Uh, uh, it, one, one of my more extroverted moves was founding a community that would actually maybe have me as a member and a founder. So uh, uh, so we're about 2,300 members now in Serial Marketers and, and just great group for, for those in the marketing uh, field to learn from each other, share gigs, advice, tech recommendations, things like that. And just uh, uh, see, see a number of you here today. So hi, and um, uh, just great to be here and learn with all of you. So that, uh, and I'll uh, add the link in, in chat in case you're not there yet, but, but uh, uh, welcome to uh, have uh, some other great folks in the community. Absolutely, thank you, David. And David is also an Uber networker um, and has a, a great network. I, in fact, just got a potential lead from his network. Um, so uh, we'll see how that goes. And Madeline, uh, I will do a brief introduction and then you can take it away. So Madeline helps quiet leaders speak up in a world of loud talkers and helps organizations articulate their vision in clear, concise messaging. Uh, she's worked with employees at companies such as MasterCard, the Jewish Museum, Mount Sinai, Tommy Hilfiger, and Marriott Hotels. And Madeline works with corporate professionals and entrepreneurs to increase their stage presence, create presentations that stand out, connect with any audience at any time, and lead their teams with authority and empathy. Uh, she, as an introvert, Madeline is hugely passionate about bringing more voices to the table, and she's on a mission to make communication more fun. So here's your opportunity, Madeline. Take it away. Uh, and if you do you need to share a screen at all, I'm going to give you that ability Great. to do that if you decide to so do. Thank you. And before I tell all of you a little bit more about me, I want to hear about you and who we have in the room. And this is going to be interactive today. So I'm not just going to talk. I'm going to give you some exercises today that you can start implementing right away. And the first thing I want you to do is take out a piece of paper and a pen and think about the number one skill or attribute that you want people to remember about you. So write that down and then hold it up in front of your camera so everyone here can see it. And if you happen to not have any paper in arm's length, you can also put that skill or attribute into the chat. But it's fun to get to see people. So hold it really close. All right, so design, creative, integrated marketing, supportive. Your job 
at a networking event, strategic thinker is to communicate that skill or attribute as quickly as possible. And I'm gonna share some skills to do that today. So let me share my screen. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. All right. So give yourself a rating. I want you to rate yourself on how you like networking on a scale of one to 10. Put it in the chat. Because I just like to take a temperature check on where the group is. I see a four, four, one, three, six, eight, seven, three, four, seven. All right. So we have a big range here. And what's so interesting about this range is you might think that all introverts dislike, mark, dislike networking, but some find ways to enjoy it. So who am I? I'm an introvert who likes networking. Before I did this, before I started a business, became a communication coach, I spent 15 years designing window displays, store environments, and experiential marketing events for multinational brands like Coach, Diesel, Armani Exchange, and Adidas. And what I learned from that experience is how to get a message across in seconds. And what I do today is train leaders and organizations to share their story, inspire their teams, and shift cultural conversations. And what we're going to talk about today is how to stand out in a crowd of loud talkers. And as someone who spent years on the sidelines being interrupted and talked over, this is something that I am so passionate about. I recently surveyed a group of 71 introverted professionals about how they are experiencing and thinking about networking one year into the pandemic. And 30% have what I would call a conversation problem. So they are worried about how to start conversations, how to introduce themselves, and how to keep those conversations going once they've started. 46% of people have what I would call a mindset problem. So for them, they feel really challenged in how they're thinking about networking. They find it contrived and awkward and they worry about being uninteresting. And often they are just trying to convince themselves to do any networking at all. And today we're gonna to talk about five skills to make your networking more effective and I dare say more fun. They are curiosity, asking questions, listening, mindset, and stories. So let's jump into the first skill. And I start with curiosity because if you've done any amount of networking, you have probably experienced some awkward small talk. Anybody raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you've experienced some awkward small talk. Okay. You've probably had some conversations that looked something like this. Hi, I'm so-and-so, what do you do? And this is my least favorite way to start a conversation. It, it really lacks creativity. And so what I want you to think about instead when you are networking is how you can pique someone else's curiosity. And a couple of ways to do that are to share something personal, share something that is not on your resume and really think about how you can highlight your personality. We're gonna do an exercise to help you do just that. So in just a moment, we are going to put you into breakout rooms where you are going to get to try this out and introduce yourself in three acts by answering these three questions. So take, let's say 30 seconds now, if you want to jot down your answers. And you're going to answer what you love about your job, something you're passionate about outside of work, and the most unusual or unique thing about you. 
So for instance, if I were going to introduce myself this way, I would share with you that what I love about my job is that I get to help other people tell stories and give presentations that they never thought were possible. Something that I'm passionate about besides helping quiet leaders speak up is education equity in New York City public schools. And one of the more unusual things about me is that despite living in Brooklyn for the last 21 years, I actually grew up on a self-sustaining farm in rural West Virginia. Just quick question, how do we handle this if we're looking for work and don't currently have a job? Great question, Nicole. So there I would share what you love about what you do generally, because it can start a much more interesting conversation in a networking situation to share what you love about your work and what you're passionate about as opposed to, I'm looking for a job. Right. All right, so what we're gonna do now is put you into small groups where you are going to get to try this out and introduce yourself and meet some new friends. So uh, how long, uh, five minutes or so, yeah. or how long? So five minutes, there'll be four people in a group. So you just wanna introduce yourself in these three acts in a very snappy way so that everyone has a chance to share. Okay, I'm going to randomly assign people, um, approximately three or four uh, people per group. Um, and then in five minutes or so, I will call you all back. So see you soon. Everyone is coming back from their breakout rooms. And as people are coming back, if you can call everyone back, Michael, I want you to think about how how you experienced introducing yourself this way and how it's different than how you might normally introduce yourself at a networking event. So you can put that in the chat or you could unmute yourself and share your thoughts. Could you please repeat the question? Some of us may have been coming back from the groups. Yes. What I wanted to know is how did it feel introducing yourself this way? And is it different than how you might normally introduce yourself? All right, I see everyone is coming back from the breakout rooms. And I was just asking the group how did it feel to introduce yourself this way? And is it different than how you normally introduce yourself? I'd love for you to share that in the chat or unmute yourself and tell us your thoughts. There you go. Howard. Yeah, well, th this is a lot easier because you're kind of forced to do it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a constructed setup for you and people are there and they know the purpose and um, you're given a time limit and uh, in questions already, you know, you kind of fed a whole formula. So it takes a lot of the pressure off of trying to break into conversations or navigate a room, identify opportunities and, you know, all the typical uh, kind of social uh, things you navigate in a real life session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Howard. Who else had, um, would like to share their thoughts? I agree that having a, a structure that everyone is going to more or less follow uh, helps me to, you know, sort of relieve some of the anxiety of like, ah, oh, what do I say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did this exercise with a group of researchers at a nonprofit where I was teaching a series of workshops. And what, what's great about this exercise is it helps you think beyond what's on the resume. And it allows you, it gives you permission to share something personal. Because if you think about a networking event and talking to strangers who you've never met before, you might miss on all of the professional friends. They might not know anything about your industry. They might never heard of your company. And they might not need your services or really care about what you do. 
But if you tell people that you're an urban gardener or a marathon runner, or you eat two lunches a day, suddenly you have things to talk about. And those were things that the, this group of colleagues discovered about each other when they did this exercise. And so when you share something personal, it just builds trust and is so much more likely to actually spark a genuine conversation. So that is skill number one, curiosity. And the second skill, or rather your curiosity can help you with the second skill, which is asking questions. And here, you can really lean into your introvert nature because introverts generally do better with planning. And you can use that to your advantage. And again, lean into your creativity because better questions get better answers. Nothing, no one says you have to follow the script of what do you do and where do you live when you're meeting new people. And what you can do instead is ask open-ended questions such as what brought you to this event? What do you love about your work? What new hobbies have you picked up during the pandemic? What's your favorite quarantine snack? These are all things that can show that you are interested in getting to know this person beyond a professional relationship and how they might be able to help you. So you're leading with curiosity. And I'd love to hear from the group if you have used any questions or been asked any questions at networking events that sparked really great conversations because we can crowdsource them here. So drop those questions that have worked really well into the chat so that other people can benefit. But don't put them all in at once. All right. Oh, great. I thought that maybe this whole group didn't have any questions, but um, now I'm seeing some questions. So what are you binge watching? What was your first car and how much did you pay for it? Asking about life under COVID. Yes. And in that case, I like to get specific and ask people because if you want to keep things on a on a more positive note, you, you might wanna steer what part of life under COVID you wanna ask them about. What made you decide to come here today? What's your Zoom background? What recipes are you experimenting with right now? Yeah, so a few questions in your pocket can really help ease the awkwardness of small talk at networking events. Have you discovered a great book, podcast, show lately? Fantastic. So we have a bunch of questions here that you can use when you are meeting people at your next virtual event. So, so far we have covered curiosity, asking questions, and now we're gonna move into the third skill and that's listening. And listening is so important and it's often one of our introvert superpowers. So this is a skill that you can use to your advantage. I always tell people that my superpower is listening. I can take all of the ideas in your head and put them together in a way that's quicker, clearer, and more compelling. And I bet you have superpowers too. And I'd love to hear a few of your introvert superpowers in the chat. Simplifying the complex. Humor, and that's a great one to connect with other people when you are introducing yourself to strangers. Noticing small details, summarizing what people have said, more humor, having a colleague for support, empathy, seeing the forest from the trees. If 
finding what's interesting about someone or something. Yes. So these are all really great skills that can you that you can use to your advantage when you are networking. Because if you are at an event and you find yourself in a conversation, give people the gift of your attention. There are two parts to communication. There's listening and they're speaking. And so often people are only good at one. And so you need both of those in order to have effective communication, effective conversations and really start building new relationships, networking. So that is skill number three, listening. And let's move on to skill number four. And that is mindset. Mindset is everything. I think of networking as 10% preparation and 90% mindset. How much fun you have, the quality of connections you make and the opportunities you create is absolutely determined by your attitude. If you think it's going to be terrible to show up to this event, whether it's in person or whether it's online, chances are it's going to be terrible and it's not going to be a good use of your time. But if you instead show up at every event with the intention of meeting interesting people, chances are good that you're going to meet interesting people. So for me, that is my number one goal whenever I go to an event. I just want to meet interesting people. So I take all of the transactions out of it not looking to sell something. I'm not looking for a new job. I'm just looking to meet interesting people and make some new friends. And when you go in with that attitude, you might eat some sweaty cheese. You might have awkward small talk. You might even listen to a less than fascinating panel conversation, but none of those need to deter you from your goal, which is to meet interesting people. So, a couple years ago, back when we still had events in person, I was at this event and I went up to this woman who was wearing a really colorful top and I commented on it and we started a conversation and she said the most amazing thing to me, which was, I always know that the people who come up to me are the people who I am meant to meet. And I just love that sentiment. And it's something that I've held onto even in this virtual world. So if I find myself in a breakout room with a group of strangers and there's not an immediate connection, I just think these are the people who I'm meant to meet and work to find that connection. And one more thing about mindset is I think people often are avoiding, especially with Zoom, I hear this a lot and I heard it a lot in the survey, they are experiencing virtual networking as awkward and they don't want to do it. And while I agree, there can be awkward experiences on Zoom or whatever virtual platform you're using, when you are able to embrace awkward as part of the experience, it can be a lot more fun. And think back to being in person at an event and what it's like to try to exchange business cards, shake hands, hold a cocktail and a plate of cheese all at the same time. Like that can also be pretty awkward. So humans are awkward sometimes and that's just part of the experience. And again, doesn't need to keep you from meeting interesting people and it can make for good stories later. So, so far we have covered curiosity, asking questions, listening, mindset. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about are stories. And stories are a great way to connect with other people at networking events. The human brain is programmed to remember stories. So, Coming up with a few stories and having those prepared is a great way to strike up conversations and talk about what you do beyond the script of what's on your resume. Stories are kind of like spices. So they add all the color and all of the flavor. 
I met these two women who are the co-founders of an ad agency called Fancy when they were publishing a survey about how marketing, uh, how advertising portrays women over 40. And when we met, they knew they wanted to do more speaking about their data and about this survey, but they didn't have a platform and they were nervous. So they hired me and we worked on their agency pitch. And then they got invited to speak at the small agency conference put on by AdAge. And that conference talk got everyone talking about their work. It launched their thought leadership platform. And now they are known experts in this area of marketing to women, changing the face of advertising. And that single conference talk also got them invited to speak on 10 more stages. And they've been quoted in the press dozens of times. And it's all because people related to their story. So I wanna help you come up with a story to talk about yourself and your work. So if you think back to the beginning when you wrote down the number one skill or attribute that you want to communicate at a networking event, you can use this format called the story spine to communicate that skill. So again, take out your paper or if you have post-its, even better. And think about how you can tell a story that conveys that quality or skill. So I'm gonna give you three minutes to write a story using these seven sentences. So this technique, it comes from improv and Pixar. There's some debate about who originated, originally came up with this, but every Pixar movie follows this format in developing the storyline. This doesn't need to be a perfect story or your final story. It's just an exercise to get your ideas out of your head. All right, so it takes 30 more seconds. All 
Okay, who has a story that they would like to share? I can share my story. Great. Once upon a time, there was an introverted 42 year old with a wife and three kids. Every day he would go to work, work really hard and do great work. One day his employer acquired another business. Because of that, his job became redundant. Because of that, he was laid off and had to look for a job until finally he decided to start his own business. And every day since that, he has been consulting to other businesses and helping software development teams sell their capabilities. Great. Thank you, Michael. So what was great about Michael's story? Put it in the chat. I want to see lots of comments in the chat. Lots of great things. And for you, Michael, how did it feel to use this story spy? I think that's the first time that I've ever sort of gone back to how I started off on my own. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, th there's a little bit of vulnerability associated with it because uh, it was a difficult time. Um, but uh, yeah, it's sort of the, uh, the kernel of, or, or the seed to how I started off on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's amazing how you can tell that origin story of how you started your business in just seven sentences. And what I like about this technique is it really helps you tell a story that has a beginning, a middle, an end very quickly so that you're really sure to get to the resolution while you still so a lot it. of commenting, honest and inspiring, relatable, great. And, and it was personal. So who else? Who else has a story that they would like to share? I have a story I can share. Wait, somebody else. Go for it. Awesome. Okay. Great. Once upon a time, there was a super passionate young marketer. Every day, she fielded requests to make things happen for her sales team like a pro. One day, she got promoted to manager. Because of that, she transformed her marketing team. And because of that, she helped lead the organization to record sales three years in a row until finally she was laid off. What? Ever since, she's been running her own business, teaching business owners and marketing teams how to organize their marketing and get the same results. Awesome. Yeah. And it's so, it, you know, I think it's such a um, common point that people start businesses when they were laid off from a job. And when you include that as just one part of a story, it doesn't need to be anything to be embarrassed about. It's just part of how you got from A to Z. It's part of your origin story. So what was great about this story? Put it in the chat for Caitlin. Happy ending. Determination, yes, pivot, easy to understand. So for, for everybody else who's here, I'm curious, like, does this help you think about how you can tell a story either about your entire career trajectory or a specific case? Like you can use this as a way to talk about one particular client journey and how you help people because getting specific is what allows other people to then see, oh yes, I understand what they do and this is how they might be able to help me or someone that I know. Great. So let me share my screen again. And I want to just recap what we covered today. So five skills that are going to make networking more fun, more effective, and hopefully take some of the pain out of it. Those are curiosity, ask questions, listen, mindset, and stories. So remember comms. And coming to a workshop like this is a great first step, but implementing the skills is even better. So I have a few ways that I can help you 
keep implementing what you have learned today. So I have a story worksheet where you can build on the exercise that we did today and keep crafting your story. And it includes a checklist so that then you can go back to what you have written and keep adding in the details that are gonna make your story even more compelling. So I put a link to that um, in the chat if you wanna grab that. And the other two ways that I can help are to um, have you, I'd love for you to fill out the next step survey. It'll just take a minute, you can do it now and it'll help you reflect on what you've learned today and what you want to continue building on. And finally, if there is anyone who knows they want more help in building your story, whether it's at a networking event or whether it's giving presentations at work or building your signature talk, I'd be happy to talk to you and you can book time to chat with me. Okay, um, should I wind up? You have more? Yeah, and I will just leave you with this to think about what story do you wanna tell? Thank you so much. I have, I just created a poll um, to rate this webinar on a scale of one to five, where one is poor and five is amazing. It's anonymous. Um, so for anybody who's an introvert, don't worry about that. So I'm gonna launch it now. And uh, everybody, please just rate. Um, and uh, I will end the polling when we get to roughly everybody voting. So, so far 47, 52. Do people see this or not yet? Did you see it? Do you see it coming up? Okay, great. And I'm happy to stay on until 1.30 and take questions. So while people are um, voting on um, rating, or I should say rating the, uh, the webinar, um, pl uh, please either just chime in to ask questions or um, enter in the chat your questions. Looks like you're getting a four and a half as a, so thank you, great. If you had questions at the top of the hour that I didn't answer, it's hard to go back through the chat and find them. So pop them in again, and I'm happy to answer them now. And again, if now would be also a good time to, um, if you click on chat and then write, and then click on the three dots, mm -hmm. um, you could, the first option is to save the chat so you'll get everybody's LinkedIn uh, and also all the questions. Of course, you could delete whatever you don't need. I will also try to uh, email this chat and the link to the, the um, uh, today's webinar to everybody. I will post it on YouTube um, uh, on the Trusted Referral Network channel. All right, so Nicole has a question, which is how do you translate these openers and what not to do reaching out to someone via email? Yeah, not, not what not to do, it was more like, and what not, like the openers and-, and Oh, okay, the yeah. reaching out to someone on LinkedIn. So what I would do is lead with curiosity and, and think of building relationships with people, right? And so if you think first just about I'm here to meet some interesting people. And, and instead of making a new job the goal, make it meet interesting people. And then you're more likely to really build connections and start building a relationship. And once you have done that, then you can find the common connections of how those people might be able to help you in your job search. And, and also, like I would, when you're reaching out to people in email or LinkedIn, think about how to be brief, right? So don't send people a, a novel, you wanna send them just enough to pique their curiosity. Marcy, you have a question. Thank you. I, I just wanted to share a very, very fast personal story. And COVID has given me the opportunity to be more extroverted, believe it or not through Zoom. And I just wanted to share that for me, it's taken time, but I've seen my progress. So um, 
I think thank there's for all of us <laughs> and, it, and it does take time and practice. So thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, I find it so interesting when introverts talk about being more extroverted and because I think there's this mistaken myth in our culture that that's what we need to do in order to be effective at our jobs, in order to be effective speakers, effective networkers. And instead, what I would encourage you to do is think about the skills that you already have and lean into your natural strengths. And so that doesn't mean you need to be someone that you're not and, and put on an act of being an extrovert. It might mean you tune it up and tune it down at certain times, but I don't think we have to associate that with being extroverted, just um, using, using our superpowers to, to our advantage in ways that are beneficial. Joy. So that's interesting because I think another myth that people have about introverts is that we don't have social skills and that's just not true. What is true, I think, is that we tend to get our energy by being alone or by ourselves and then we can spend that energy with other people, whereas extroverts tend to get energy from being with others. So I feel like it doesn't have anything to do with your level of social skills. And I think we've shown that today with all the things that people talked about with their superpowers. It has nothing to do with social skills. It has to be with where you feel comfortable and how you can use those skills um, in other situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for bringing that up because people do often conflate introversion and shyness. And some introverts are really confident in their social skills and interacting with other people and some extroverts are not. And so, um, you know, some introverts experience social anxiety and plenty don't. So there's a real range, which is one of the things that showed up in the survey that I did. Any other questions? I just wanted to follow up and something that I've learned this year too is just being honest. I'm more honest with myself. I'm more honest with how I feel and I'm more honest sharing. I'm sharing that with others. And, and you'd be surprised when you're honest about how you feel. Others may say, oh my gosh, I feel that same way. Um, so I, that's, that's been another helpful thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I shared at the beginning, I'm an introvert. I like networking. I just prefer to meet people in smaller groups and quieter spaces. So um, in the last few minutes, I'd love for you to share in the chat, what was your biggest takeaway from today? And we have time for one more question. If, and if you don't wanna unmute yourself and talk, you can put it into the chat. Using stories. Madeline, it's Lenny. <laughs> How are you? Sorry, I'm having severe technical difficulties today. You know what's funny? In the in the interest of sharing and being honest, I decided I'm not one of those people that can just give you a takeaway in like three seconds. Like I need to process and probably tonight I'll be like, oh, you know what? Now I really get it. So if anyone else out there is like, I have no idea what the takeaway is right away, it's okay, you're not alone. <laughs> Thanks, Madeline, this is awesome. Thanks, Lenny. All right, so one more question. Let's see, was that a question or a comment from someone? Um, so focusing on meeting, meeting a person, not just a business contact. Yes, that is huge. When you change your goal, it will completely change how you think about networking and how you show up and your ability to genuinely connect with other people. Being more personal. And again, that really helps establish a connection and find something to talk about so that you're not stuck in that awkward small chat, uh, small talk that we've all experienced. Wonderful. Um, Madeline, thank you so much. This was a great webinar. I hope everybody got a lot out of it as much as I did. I certainly got a tremendous amount out of it. Um, thank you, David, if you're still here uh, for co-sponsoring this. And remember, if you want to reach out to David, um, look up Serial Marketers or David Berkowitz on LinkedIn. If you want to reach out to me, uh, Michael Bendit, 
um, on LinkedIn, uh, or you can go to trustref.net, which is our trusted referral network site, uh, particularly if you are a independent marketing services provider and want to learn more about the network. Uh, and Madeline, I guess you've provided your LinkedIn and information about how people can contact you. Mm -hmm. um, I will um, circulate the chat uh, via email and a link to the a copy of this um, on YouTube or a link to the uh, the video excluding the um, breakout rooms. Great. So I will put my LinkedIn in the chat again. And if anyone has questions or want to get in touch with me, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, now's another good time to go last minute, uh, save the chat because it will have everything in it unless somebody else puts something in last minute, but um, I will also try to distribute it. So uh, it's now 1.30. I'm going to sign off because I have a 1.30. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks again.